Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. I am Dr. Amal Mohamed Asman Khader, pediatrician by training, and I'm also the course director here at Wild Cornell Medicine in Qatar. I'm also the course director for the pediatric clerkship. The children in Qatar in general, we have uh, many of them are healthy weight, but there is a group of them who are really overweight. And we did a study in 2011. We did elementary, middle school and high school, and it's clear there is a high percentage of obesity and overweight. And also at the same time, in my clinic, I do see children who are a little bit underweight. And some of them, they are normal weight, but the parents perceive them as low weight. And that's because they compare with the other children in the family. As you know, we have extended families in Qatar and they keep comparing with niece and nephews. And then they come to the clinic with that complaint. However, sometimes the myth in the community also fat children are healthy children conflict when we teach the mom that it is healthy to have a normal weight while the normal weight in some houses or places can be seen as underweight compared with the others. I think we have a big role to start early on. Schools has a role to increase their level of awareness about healthy nutrition and also about the importance of exercise. What I'm seeing also, we have to work on the parents too because the parents usually are the role model for their children and we have to target them to help them be aware of the healthy lifestyle, let me say it. The other piece is developmental. If the mother starts early on with something with high expectation and the child is not ready for it, it builds a fight. So I think the main focus has to be early on by educating the parents. And building routine around eating is important when they are at the stage. Early on with the bottle feeding versus breastfeeding versus when to introduce food and what to introduce actually. In the clinic many times um, I see maybe an 18 month old child on the bottle. Usually they tell me, you know what, it's hard because her sister or brother is still using the bottle and they're three, four years old. So I, I tell her, you know what, the best thing to get rid of it for both of them. For example, when they're sleepy and tired, they want the bottle and many times parents give them the bottle to sleep. So what happens is they feel and they get programmed that part of the soothing mechanism is to get some food. And imagine when they grow older, they face other stresses, being mad with a friend, got hit and has some pain or frustrated. So the first thing they will do, they will go and eat. So that builds other habits that when they get older, it might not be the bottle or the milk. It can be a burger, it can be nuggets, it can be anything. The other thing we have in Qatar also, another challenge that we have nannies at home or maids. If the mom is not well aware, let alone if you have a nanny, and we have a high turnover too. So even if the mom is conscious about it and she trained the nanny on a certain style or routine, after a year or two, she might change her. After a month or two, she might change her. Someone else take care of the child. If the parents don't walk, they need the soda or they need like, anything, even milk. They are in the car, getting on the horn and someone come to give it to them. The child will see, okay, the norm is not to walk or the norm is not to get off and do things and do all things by myself. So if it's not part of the lifestyle, it's hard to get the children to do it. I guess we need to tackle these. And it is not only the 15 to 20 minutes visit in the clinic, it is beyond that. I can see many times the family are together, but they're not listening to each other. Listening meaning you block any other thoughts, no WhatsApp, no calls, nothing. You're just focusing completely your brain, your body, your heart. For parents to discover their children's potential, it needs some communication and time together.